Hello, welcome to the course of DVB S2. So today we are going to discuss about a chapter named DVB S2 System Architecture. So here in this chapter we are going to discuss about the system architecture. Then we will discuss about the FEC code block, then modulation modes, and about the PL scrambler and about the role of factor. So here this diagram is showing the satellite transmission of DVB S2. So here this is a DVB S2 which uh, transmit a transport stream and this transport stream goes to the input processing so through the input processing a b8 frame comes out that is of time division multiplexing scheme this uh, this input process input processing use the time division multiplexing technique to divide the signal and then it goes to channel encoder that consists of bch plus ldpc codes so after applying these codes the tdma frame comes out and here this frame consists of 16,200 bits or either it consists of a 64,800 bit. So after this, uh, this TTM frames goes to the modulator that consists of a single carrier QPSK, 8PSK, 16 or 13, 32 AAPSK modulation. So after selecting the modulation scheme from here, a signal is, uh, signals comes out that is a TDMA time division multiplexing packet of physical layer packet. So this uh, signals comes out through the modulator. So this is a DVB S2 system architecture. The next the DVB S2 is based on LDPC that is low density parity check code. So LDPC is used to achieve high performance. So LDPC code is a simple block code with very limited algebraic structure. So it is discovered by R. Glager in 1962. So here LDPC code have an parallel uh, parallelizable decoding algorithm which consists of simple operations such as addition, comparison and table lookup. So the degree of parallelism is adjustable which make it easy to trade off throughput and complexity. So here the uh, DVBS2 is using this code that is low density parity check. Next DVBS2 provide many transmission modes such as FEC coding and modulation. So here as we know that digital transmission via satellites are affected by power and bandwidth limitation. So that's why the DVBS2 provide uh, multiple transmission modes of F FEC coding and the modulation. So it also provide different trade off between power and spectrum efficiency. So the code rate of 1 by 4, 1 by 3, 2 by 5, 1 by 2, 3 by 5, 2 by 3, 3 by 4, 4 by 5. 5 by 6, 8 by 9 and 9 by 10 are used. So these are used according to selected modulation and the system requirement. So the coding rate that is 1 by 4, 1 by 3 and 2 by 5 have been introduced to operate in combination with QPSK under exceptional poor link condition where the signal level is below the noise level. Next is the, there are two FEC code block length that is 64800 bit and the 16, uh, 16200 bit. So here these two, uh, do, uh, these are the two bit, these are the two type of FEC code block. So here the CN performance improve for long block length but the end to end modern latency increases as well. It means when the block length is 64,800 then at, at this level the CN performance improve but the delay between the end to end connective modem is increased. So for broadcast application that are not critical for the delay use the long frame while the interactive application use the shorter frame length. Next is the four type of modulation modes are used in DVB-S2 system. The first one is QPSK, then is 8PSK, these are used for broadcast application. 16 APSK is used for specific broadcasting application and interactive application and the last one is 32 APSK that is used for the professional application. Next is the DVB-S2 also features the presence of a physical layer scrambler. So here the main advantage of the physical layer in DVB-S2 are it has capability of differentiating individual carrier from multi multi-carrier multi-channel transponder. It provides randomization of periodic pilot symbol pattern and it also allows the application of repetition coding at the DVB-S2 modulator to further increase the C by N plus 1 operating range of the system. Then is the role of factor. So DVB-S2 has the three role of factor and these role of factor are used to determine the spectrum shape. 
so these uh, the the three role of factors are like alpha is equal to 0.35 that is used in dbbs then is alpha is equal to 0.25 and the last one is alpha is equal to 0.20 that is used for tighter bandwidth shape restriction so dbbs2 is suitable for use on different satellite transport uh, transponder bandwidth and the frequency band so this is about the dbbs2 system architecture thank you